Hi YouTube, it's Joshua Miles and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is yet another episode in my Summer of True Crime series and today we are joined by the amazing Gabby Lysis. I'm sure loads of you have heard of her. Her content is really, really good. I'm I say that about everyone, but really, everyone's content in the series is amazing. Gabby focuses primarily on more vintage cases and older cases, so be sure to go check her out after this video and make sure you watch the case that we did over on her channel too. I'd just like to point out this video has not been made to cause disrespect or anything like that. It has just been made to spread awareness about this case by compiling information from various different public sources on the internet. Now, with all that being said, let's delve right into this case. On Tuesday, the 31st of January, 20. 2012, Elizabeth Salins came home from a day of shopping with her friends. Now the Salins family were actually very, very well off and they lived together in a castle in Wingen, West Flanders, Belgium, and that castle was called Carpentier Castle. When Elizabeth came home that fateful Tuesday, she had planned to run a bath, get off her feet and relax from the day she had had shopping with her friends, but what she found was the complete opposite of that. She wanted to relax before preparing the family meal for that evening. But when she walked through the front door of their family home, she was confronted by a horror that would change the Salem's family forever. Elizabeth was met by a blood trail in the entrance hall of the castle that she called home. There were shell cases littering the floor and her 34-year-old husband, Stien, was nowhere to be seen. This is the curious case of Stien Salins. Stien Salins was born Monday the 26th of December 1977 in West Flanders, Belgium. Not much is really known about his childhood or even early adulthood, but we do know that at one point he studied to be become a real estate developer. In his late 20s, not entirely sure what age, but he married Elizabeth Geiselbrecht and they had four children together. Now when it comes to Elizabeth, her family was very wealthy. Elizabeth's family lived in a rural manor house called Carpentier Castle. So Stin married into this newfound wealth. This was something that he wasn't really used to, but he and Elizabeth made some very smart financial decisions, mostly to ensure that their children would have healthy savings as well. When Elizabeth returned home and saw this very gruesome scene, she did the smart thing and she notified authorities immediately. Now, investigating officers, first thing they did was they arrested Elizabeth's father, which was Stin's father-in-law, and Elizabeth's brother, which was Stin's brother-in-law. However, the officers did not have enough to really tie these two individuals to any crime, but they kept them in custody for the maximum of 48 hours. While they were in custody, police tried to find any evidence to link them to the crime while also interrogating them for many hours. They hoped to get a confession out of either of them. They didn't get a confession and they also didn't find any evidence to tie them to the crime, so the two of them walked free. Dr. Andre Geiselbrecht, Elizabeth's father, and Peter Geiselbrecht, Elizabeth's brother, walked free on the 2nd of February 2012. However, police did not let their efforts go to waste. The missing persons unit of the Belgian Federal Police Force worked alongside the Civil Protection Division to try to locate the missing 34-year-old, Stin Salem's. They searched every inch of the castle and every inch of the surrounding land and they were just trying to find where this missing man was because due to how much blood there was at the crime scene, he was probably bleeding out a lot and needed medical attention fast. On the 3rd of February 2012, the police arrested a man who went by the name of Pierre Serry and he was arrested in relation to this case. Now Pierre Serry was actually a known criminal to the police in the area and had been linked to the sale of illegal substances and even human trafficking. Pierre was actually a friend of Dr. Andre, who was Elizabeth's father, and witnesses report that the two of them, Pierre and Dr. Andre, had actually been very, very angry at the fact that Stien had decided that he wanted to move him and his family to Australia, taking the children and Elizabeth with him. Now, it is important to note that Elizabeth actually worked alongside her father at a medical practice as his 
business partner, I believe. And this medical practice was in, I believe it's pronounced, Rusalade. Alongside the arrest of Pierre Seri, the police actually arrested four people from Chechnya, Russia in connection to this case. The investigators suspected that these four Chechens had been somehow involved in the homicide, and that was due to the fact that on a routine traffic stop, the police had discovered a detailed map of the castle grounds where the Salins lived, and on that map was the words Pierre and then an S, which they believed to have been the name of Pierre Seri. The police also believes that Pierre Seri had worked with Elizabeth's father and Elizabeth's brother to arrange for these four Chechens to get rid of Stian. However, the very next day on the 4th of February 2012, Pierre Seri and the four Chechens were actually released and this was due to insufficient evidence. Then on the 15th of February 2012, Elizabeth's father and Elizabeth's brother alongside Pierre Seri and the four Chechens were all arrested arrested again for questioning. However, just like the first time, the four Chechens were actually released the very next day. However, Elizabeth's father, Elizabeth's brother, and Pierre Seri were all re-arrested on suspicion of committing a homicide. On Friday the 17th of February 2012, the body of 34-year-old father of four, Stien Salins, was discovered in the Maria Alta forest near a cabin owned by Pierre Seri, and that was discovered about 100 meters away from the cabin. The body had actually been discovered in a well that had only been dug two weeks prior to Stien going missing. And the well had actually been dug by Pierre Seri and Pierre's cousin. Medical examiners quickly conducted an autopsy on the remains and determined that Sien had actually succumbed to a bullet wound to his right lung. On the 20th of February 2012, just over 20 days since Sien went missing, he was finally laid to rest. Sien was laid to rest in a private ceremony in Korkryuk. His body was then finally buried in the family burial cellar. Dr. Andre Gisselbrecht, uh, who was Elizabeth's father, and Peter, who was Elizabeth's brother, were actually both released on bail shortly after the ceremony had taken place. Now, the police actually did arrest another man in connection to this case. And this man was a Dutch man called Tynus van Wiesenbeck. And they arrested him because they suspected that he had some kind of involvement in the homicide. However, it isn't really known what led them to believe that and shortly after he was arrested and questioned he was released without charge. In a very shocking turn of events on the 5th of March 2012, Dr. Andre Geiselbrecht told police that he wanted to teach Stin Salins a lesson. He admitted to police that he had ordered Pierre to beat up Stin Salins and hold him hostage for a few days to teach him this lesson. A piece of evidence was found, a text message in Pierre's phone that basically proved what Dr. Andre said is true, that he had ordered Pierre to beat up Stin. On the 26th of January in the year 2013, DNA was found at the crime scene and on Stin's remains and they determined who was responsible for Stin Salen's demise. It was discovered that the person responsible was a Dutch criminal from Eindhoven named Ronald von Bommel or Ron to his friends and family. However, Ronald could not be charged or even questioned because he had passed away in May of 2012 due to pancreatic cancer. Because of his condition, police figured that Ronald had not worked alone because it would have been very hard for him to drag Stin's body from the crime scene to the well. They decided though to continue their search for justice and attempt to locate Ronald's partner in crime. And interestingly enough, near the location where Stin's body was recovered from, they detected a mobile phone. The number of this mobile phone had actually been in constant contact with Pierre's phone from November of 2011 to January 31st the day that Stin went missing. It is believed that this mobile phone was used by Ronald in the months leading up to the homicide. On the 19th of February, 2013, Dr. Andre Geiselbrecht was arrested again in connection to this case with suspected involvement in the homicide. His lawyers were quick to file an appeal against this decision due to insufficient grounds and Dr. Andre was subsequently released on bail. However, on the 25th of June of the year 2015, Dr. Andre was arrested 
again. This was because Ronald's driver, Roy Larmet, told authorities that Ronald had previously told him that he had been ordered to get rid of a man with an incestuous history. Subsequently, Dr. Andre was kept in pre-trial detention. The trial didn't actually take place until the 9th of March 2017, and boy, let me tell you, this trial was very, very turbulent. On the 2nd of May 2017, Dr. Andre confessed to ordering Pierre Seri to get rid of Stien instead of just beating him up. Now, according to Dr. Andre, he had done this because he had suspicions that Stien was actually incestuous and had actually been one of his children. On the 18th of April 2018, Dr. Andre Geiselbrecht was sentenced to 27 years in prison for the homicide of Stien Salines. Pierre Seri was sentenced to just 21 years on the same charge. Roy Larmitz, who was Ronald's driver, was sentenced to 15 years for his involvement in the homicide. And a man called Avert de Klerk was actually sentenced to 27 years in prison. And this man was the person who had taken the money from Dr. Andre and had given it to Ronald, who had, you know, paid him as a middleman, and he was sentenced to 27 years for that. However, in another twist and turn of events, all the sentences were actually appealed, and on the 6th of May 2019, earlier this year, Dr. Andre's sentence was reduced from 27 years to just 21 years in prison. Pierre Serry's sentence was reduced to just 19 years, and a Vert de Clark sentence was reduced to 20 years. Interestingly, Roy Larmet's sentence remained at 20 years in prison. Due to the fact that the reasonable period of charging had expired, the court was unable to charge these people with the maximum sentence. Elizabeth's brother has not been charged in connection to this case, and that is everything that we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching this episode in my Summer of True Crime series. Like I said at the beginning of this video, don't forget to jump over to Gabulosis's channel to check out the case that we did over there. I've left a link to it in the description. Before I wrap up this video, I just want to mention a few things happening on the channel that you may have noticed in my last video. YouTube are being really, really difficult to work with to get these cases out there. And there are certain words that if I mention in the video, um, they will demonetize and flag the video. And what that means is, first and foremost, I won't be earning any revenue from the video, which isn't at the top of my list of priorities, to be honest. But most importantly, those videos aren't being pushed out to all my subscribers and they're not being put on the recommended page. And that's because YouTube can't make any money from it. Um, so I'm going to be censoring my videos slightly in the next coming coming weeks and trying out different techniques of trying to keep the videos monetized because if the videos can stay monetized, it means more people will be able to see these cases and these stories can get heard. I'm really excited to announce that not only am I going to be on the first ever True Crime panel at Summer in the City this year, which is a YouTuber event in London. I am also now a featured guest of the event, so be sure to head over to the City website and check out tickets and dates and come see myself, Ellen O'Neill, George Marie and Caitlin Rose talk about true crime on a panel and then come meet us afterwards and hang out. It'll be a really fun time. And with all that being said, I will see you in the next video. every time you slam the door I would be the richest girl alive, live, live. If you hadn't run away, every time I asked you stay, you would sleep right next to me.